Hello and welcome to another episode of the Darren Green Show. Girl, what is going on with your lives, honey? What's going on? What's going on? You know, I'm here, child, recording this Friday morning, child. It is snowing where I'm at. I'm in Jersey. It's snowing. I'm hoping that it snows some more so my job can tell me, hey, we're going to be closed today because, you know, weather storms out here, child. It wanted to snow at 4 a.m. I'm like, why y'all didn't start snowing at 12 something? You know, get get the snow rolling. So at least by the time it's morning, it'd be five inches so I could say, oh, I can't drive in that. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. So I probably got to go to work today. I'm not, I'm, I'm, it, it is what it is. We might not see a lot of people because, I mean, it is snowing outside and it's not stopping. And, you know, a lot of people don't want to go out in, in that type of weather. But, you know, people always try to find a way, honey. Don't they always try to find a way? Anyway, enough about that, child. My week was grow. Look, <laughs> and if you've been on social media, I mean, I've been on, you know, on again, off again or whatever. You know, I'm really, you know, I had to, I got some things going on. I got some business moves to make. Okay, you know, I got to, you know, I secured another interview. So that's what I was doing this week, which is, you know, fingers crossed, because I really hope I do get this one, because this would just work well into what I'm doing, my schedule, my social media schedule and everything. So fingers are crossed, but, you know, you never know. Um, whatever, you know, you know, I tell y'all everything about my life, child, because you know what's going on, honey. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. So we do have a lot to get into today, okay? <laughs> It's a lot of big topics, and then there's some small topics in between that I really want to get into. Unfortunately for my people at the We Are You Radio, you're going to have to listen to the replay um, because I'm only you know able to give you guys like three topics per uh, episode, which you know hopefully we'll get my two hour slot soon. You know this year, but shout out to y'all. Let me give y'all bomb. You know because y'all be listening to like shout out to y'all. Shout out to my audio listeners that listen to whatever you know podcast platform that you're listening on. Shout out to my YouTube. YouTube, y'all are doing y'all are doing the big one on YouTube. Let me just let's be very clear. Shout out to the people on YouTube, okay? Because y'all really, uh, you know, support me. These bitches don't support me. They waiting for my downfall, but I'll never fall, okay? <sighs> uh, TikTok. Anyway, look. Let me not let me not show you no apps, honey. Because you know it, it ain't like I said. It's not y'all. It's these algorithms, child. They really plan me like you know, be making two K. In a month, and now they ain't trying to put your content out. You know, it, it, it's just it, like I said, it's a lot of it, it's a numbers game. I remember um, a creator of mine once said that you know it's like social media is like a lottery. You know, you know, you you make your little posts, and it's it might do well, or you might get five views, <laughs> and it don't matter how much your follower count is, child. Is you girl, it, you better get what we give you, okay? Anyway. We have a lot to get into today, right? So we got to talk about Zeus Network and how the CEO was sleeping with everybody, child. Well, not everybody, child. Let's be very clear. But he is sleeping with the cast of the baddies, allegedly. Then we'll have to get into Doja Cat and her brother, child. What's going on over there? We're going to get into that. We got to also talk about Taraji P. Henson. Are we backpedaling? Are we not? Mm, okay. After that, we'll talk about Holly Bailey getting dragged because she's posting her pregnant pictures. Like, what? Like, are y'all serious? And then we got some side topics to get into also. All that and more coming up on the Darren Green Show. I had to give myself a bomb because that intro was fire. Okay, period. Now, <clears throat> without further ado, let's get into the first topic. Okay, because, girl, when I tell you, when I tell you with Zeus, right? Zeus Network. I am actively watching this baddie season because this is just a lot that's come out, right? They started taping the reunion. We got some confirmed fights. Let's just start with this topic. So recently, Stunner Girl, that's one of the cast members on Baddies East, okay? Rapper, whatever. I don't really care for her, but she did say something that was very interesting, okay? So she took to our social media to put the CEO of Zeus Network, Lemuel, L L Lemuel, I'm just going to, I'm going to call him Lemuel. I don't care about these grammar police that be in my comments talking about something. You ain't say the name right. I'm going to call him L. I'm going to respect it. I'm going to respect his name enough to just call him L. Okay. Because I don't know how to pronounce that name. Is it Lemuel? Is it Lemuel? I don't know. So basically, Stunner Girl puts him on blast. She made various unexpected claims about him underpaying cast members, treating them poorly, and even sleeping with them. Okay, so for obvious reasons, the allegations came 
as a shock to fans and now have prompted a response from the CEO. According to him, he claims that they are false and that she's only trying to make things up for clout. He said, in quotes, people out here have nothing better to do than make wild stories and lies. He began on his recent Instagram story, probably because Zeus isn't signing their checks or funding their lives anymore. Folks need to find some business, uh, preferably outside of Zeus. Or if they want to be on baddies, just say that. Mm. Girl, that was shade, 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 honey. <laughs> well, I don't think Stunner Girl is coming back. Cause I seen, cause I was watching some of her clips. We're not gonna play any of her clips on there, cause you no, know, she she curses a lot. I don't want to bleep all that out. It, it's, it's it's too much. Okay, just if you haven't seen it, it's all over the vlogs, right? She was talking about like a lot of things. She was talking about how like I guess Natalie was trying to fire her because she basically basically was like, you know, Stunna, you know, you you know, I I we like they like the girls that like the party and da, 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 I guess trying to quietly fire her, <laughs> saying that. Um, you not giving it like you was before. It's not giving what it's supposed to have gave. My thing is this. I didn't like this season. And I, like I said, I've watched a couple. I watched a couple episodes. I recently watched the episode, you know, last week with um, with Smiley going through her little convulsions and stuff like that. I have not seen any of Stunner Girl. I mean, maybe they phased her out during the season, but like she just hasn't been bringing it. And it seems very clear that she wants to, you know, start a music career. We've seen her recently, you know, get into it with Sierra Child and that one-sided argument. That's why I was like, girl. So, you know, they're probably like, okay, you you getting a little bit too big for your bridges. You you not supporting us first. You're not putting us first. So we're going to have to get some new girls because you're not, you, you know, we can't have dead weight. And let's be very clear. The baddies eats the cast. It doesn't make any sense how it would be so many people. And y'all don't be giving new people to shine. Like, get... Get rid of these old people. Get rid of Roly. I know y'all seen that petition list. Okay. Get rid of it. Get rid of all of them. I'm tired of them. Get rid of Natalie. Make Natalie a damn reunion host. I'm so sick of her just being there and curating this mess. Like she can make so much more money if she just played that executive producer role and just, you know, come pop in when you need to pop in and then go, you know, pop in during a reunion or whatever. Like, girl, you want to be a shiny so bad. People didn't even like shiny. Because she's on Basketball Wives and she, she created it and she's a cast member of it and all that. And she can hire and fire anybody that's in her circle. Like, girl, it, it need to be the Shawnee show. Like, honestly. So, yeah. I think that she's just voicing her opinion because she's probably upset that, you know, Zeus Network is basically phasing her out. Do I believe her? There could be some truthness to it. I think that there was another cast member that was on a podcast that said that or they alluded to sleeping with their boss right so and that was i believe that was t and you know people made the connections they said girl they said janisha gonna be fighting on the reunion girl <laughs> it's gonna be an awkward reunion but you know they said they said janisha be knowing like she don't care like it's you know it's part of the business or whatever. And, you know, he's, he's, you know, the, the, the CEO of Zeus network. He is, I'm, look, I'm not saying he a bad this man. Cause let's be very clear. He probably made millions of dollars off this platform, you know, off the backs of people watching this train wreck of a network and, 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 the, and their shows that are just nothing but like low hanging fruit, the same low hanging fruit that I'll be watching. Cause I will be watching the reunion because you know what? And my thing is this, it's going to be an awkward reunion, but also like, did we get Nene last minute because y'all wanted to, you know, I guess bump bump up the numbers because y'all know people said they was going to be unsubscribing to Zeus, you know, soon because y'all not giving us any substance and y'all just giving us like mess and just like, you know, toxicity and stuff. Because Nene is supposed to be on and I'm like, girl, what is going on? Somebody said in the comments too, I said, Janisa, Janisa she better fight. <laughs> she better be fighting, honey. Girl, because these, hmm. Chad, this is this is gonna be a mess. This is gonna be a mess. But I don't think they're going to talk about it. I think they're definitely gonna keep it under wraps. Um because the CEO doesn't want to be looked at in a way that's unprofessional. But like, girl, I mean, the way y'all you be looking at them girls on there, child, look like y'all you done had some dealings like, oh, you wanna be on this season? Let me tell you what you can do to get there. Allegedly. But anyway, yeah, Nene's supposed to be hosting. I don't know what this is gonna look like. Um, a lot of people are saying that, oh, this is kind of, you know, trash for of her. Like, you know, this is like 
you know, giving white refrigerator. Look, here's the thing. Nene has not been on any form of reality TV in a minute. Like, I think she needs to get her feet wet. I think she needs to start doing stuff that's, like, not um, big, net, that does have a big network behind it. I mean, and at the end of the day, when it, and I said this on my TikTok, Zeus pays, like, the doc the bigger celebrities to do appearances for their shows and even have their own show. Like when we think about people like Jocelyn and even Natalie Nunn, like these, you know, these girls are top billing. Um, and even when you think about people like Tamar that comes on and, and, and acts as a reunion host, cause they did that one year. I'm pretty sure these women are not just coming on and just getting paid peanuts. Like, you know, they're going to be paying Nene. Well, I think that this is a good opportunity for her to, you know, come back onto the scene. I think that, you know, if something comes that da- something down the road happens with, you know, Nene can get her own show on Zeus Network. Like at the end of the day, people are going to watch that. Or it might make Zeus appear more wholesome than it was before. If we, we kind of phase out the baddies and the Jocelyn's cabaret antics, you know, and we give us some good content. Because I know Nene c- can make some good content. They want to say that she don't sell or she can't have her own show. She needs to be reactive of other people. I don't believe that. I think Nene could really have her own platform and people will watch it. We'll definitely see. I'm not sure if the Zeus Network demographic will be taken on to Nene, but I definitely feel like Nene's fans will subscribe to Zeus to see what's going on. I think that they're subscribing right now just to watch this reunion, just to see her, you know, because Nene's fans are, she got a lot of fans. Let's be very clear. I'm interested to see what is, what's going to go down. I'm not expecting anything too monumental. Like, I think she's just going to read some questions. The girl now... And that's another thing about this, too. When you look at the confirmed, these alleged confirmed, because this is like a Baddies East T page. I'm not sure, right? Sorry for my audio listeners. I am showing a tweet of some confirmed fights. Okay, we got Camilla and Roly, Biggie and Roly, Camilla, Anna, Biggie versus Roly, Suki and Roly, Suki and E.T., Biggie E.T., Camilla E.T., Takeshi E.T. I don't know who E.T. is. I think... I'm not sure who that is, because I, like I said, I got girl, I got to rewatch this whole season because I want to get all the goops and gaga, ga, okay, and just a lot more. So it's gonna be a lot of fights. So I'm like, Nene, what you gonna be doing while all these fights is happening, girl? They, be, girl, they better up security, honey, because they better look. She said, now hold on, now you ain't gonna get me now, <laughs> girl. That is so crazy. Like it's like people. Let me tell you something. The way people switch it up though, because. Why everybody talk about so I'm about to delete my Zeus. I'm about to delete my Zeus. Then when then when the news came out about this dang reunion, everybody like, oh, I'm about to be glued. I'm about to watch the news came out about the CEO messing with everybody. Girl, everybody now tuning in. I'm still getting rid of Zeus after the reunion, still. Like, I I, I promise you that. Because you know what? I ain't messing with them no more. And unless they get some hope, some more wholesome content or they just change, like, I don't know. Maybe they not change the CEO. Do I think they need to change the CEO? No. I just think that girl, we gotta we gotta be better, honey. We gotta we definitely have to get some editors. We definitely have to get some people that are you know people that worked for actual reality TV to come in and and really edit a show and get the con get the right content. I think that still with that whole smiley situation, whether she was faking or not, we shouldn't have seen all of that. That was very cringy. I think that that this is you know these are learning experiences. This is a new network. You know, we should give it grace, but certain things is just, you know, too far, too far. But nevertheless, tell me what y'all think about it in the comments. I will be tuning in. I might do my little, I might do like a review of the reunions. Like I'm not going to start reviewing the episodes. It's too far late in the season. So I might do like the reunions. We might and we might talk about it on the panel because we're not really talking about Real Housewives of Potomac no more. I mean, we are, but we're we're kind of taking a pause because the season is trash, to be honest, girl. But I might be on here talking about Baddie Sunny Chow, <laughs> the reunion, of course. Now another topic that I wanted to get into is Doja Cat. Oh my god. I mean, I feel so bad for her. Doja Cat's mother, Deborah Elizabeth Sawyer, is seeking a restraining order against her son and wants her superstar daughter to get protection from him as well, right? So TMZ reported that Sawyer filed legal documents alleging the 30-year-old Raymond Dalamini, okay, girl, we're going to call him a Raymond, honey, has abused his mother as well 
as Doja Cat. The outlet says that Doja has allegedly had her teeth knocked out by Raymond um, and gotten cuts and bruises from his physical abuse. He also accused of stealing and destroying property belonging to Doja, being, in quotes, very degrading and demeaning verbally, and leaving the 28-year-old star feeling unsafe and traumatized. Okay. Sawyer alleges that she was physically abused and threatened by Raymond multiple times over the past year, claiming the most recent incident happened earlier this month. The judge reportedly granted Sawyer a court order of protection pending a hearing from a permanent restraining order and it's not the first time she got one against him but the previous order had expired okay so they've been dealing with this situation for a minute now doja has not yet filed nor has she made a statement um so she is going to have to file if she wants protection you know against her brother so the fact that they said that this has been going on like she had a the mother had to put a restraining order on him before and it expired like what is what's happening over there? That is that is really crazy. You know, how can somebody now I'm not sure what the whole knocking the teeth out. When was that? Was that before Doja? After Doja's rise to fame? Was that during? I'm not sure. I think it was recently, but like, how is this person, how does this person have so much access to you? Your Doja Cat, right? Like, yeah, I'm not trying to say, I'm, look, I, no way me, shape, or form trying to say I'm victim blaming at all. I think that he needs to be held accountable. That man needs to see some time, actually. You knocking some people's teeth out, you are more likely to off somebody, to be honest. So let's be very clear. Um, but I just found it weird that, you know, this person has so much access because, you know, celebrities have security and, and I'm pretty sure celebrities have security for their parents as well. You know, People are, you know, people are starting to know who people's parents are and where they are and doxing and all that. You would want to have that type of protection. But like, you know, the fact that he was able to do that, like, oh, my goodness. And where, where is your security? Like security definitely lacked because if this happened during, you know, her rise to fame or whatever, or do you ha how she is now or did this happen before she became famous? Right. Because that that's definitely something to, to you know, question. Um, but I'm just looking at this picture right now, child. Sorry to the audio listeners, but like he look, he looked like he, you know, gets into the things like, mm. and people were talking about how you know domestic uh family member domestic abuse from family members is a real thing. It's not just you know with just relationships and and you know man and wife or whatever. It's it could very much be like a sibling, and I think I think that you know maybe. You know, as I reflect, maybe they try to have some type of relationship with him because that's her mother's child and that's also your brother. So maybe they try to, you know, have some type of relationship or whatever, even though, you know, they had that past. But, you know, it's given very much there's something wrong with this boy. That's that's what it's given. OK, we got to put these people away, honey. I know that's your child. That's your brother child. We got to get we got to put them in the house. OK, and you know what house I'm talking about, child. If they are acting irate like that, like that is that is some close to Dahmer type. Sh OK, let's be very clear. And also just like looking at the comments too, like people saying, oh, he's slapping the demon out of her. Like, come on now. Come on, come on, come on. We cannot talk like this. I think that and somebody said this too. this ability that the general public has of like humbling people or holding them accountable. Oh, well, you did this, this, that like it's a main indicator that. It's a projection of your your own insecurities and, you know, what you got going on in your life. Like, at the end of the day, like or I hate the girl, I've definitely said something. I was definitely critical of Doja Cab, but girl, this ain't it. This type of talking ain't it. I've seen some stand pages. You know, you know how the stand culture is on Twitter talking about some, oh, well, you know, making making their little jokes now because I guess they're not getting, a, like, the, their faves are not getting along no more. But I'm just like, okay, that's kind of corny and kind of like, weird for you to say like low level life type things to say not we're over here glorifying dv as if our fave didn't suffer from dv you know i'm and, and i'm gonna keep it i'm gonna keep it real pg but i'm just saying like can we really talk like let's not be let's be very clear like it affects everybody and it has affected everybody so we should not joke about those things even though you're not cool with this person this person came for your fave or whatever the case is girl i'm just saying all right doja cat i hope you find some solace in this situation even though you know i got some differences with your with your attitude on things 
you don't deserve this and you definitely need to get that uh, protection, this, this restraining order done like soon, pronto, or or up security. Look, I look, I get you, get you Pookie and Peanut. Okay, next time this man show up at your house, get them to get him. Okay, let's be very clear. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's move on. There's nothing much to talk about here. Now, I did want to get into Taraji. Like, we're Taraji. Taraji, we got to talk. We do. We have to talk because what? What are we doing? The TV and movie star Taraji P. Henson wants to continue discussing the pay discrimination in Hollywood, just not while speaking about the color purple. Okay, so during a recent interview, the actress expressed her frustrations about the situation, proclaiming that it's not fair that her comments seem more important than the film. Okay, so she said in quotes, I hope they can focus back onto the film because right now, to me, it feels like what I said is now becoming louder than this beautiful film. She continued, and that's not fair to me or anybody in the film. You came to that recollection now. My whole thing about this, right, not only did you start the conversation yourself, right, but you continued to have this conversation in other interviews. Like, it would have been one thing if you would have said it one and done in an interview. And I get it. You know, after that, a lot of the people that's going to do this, you know, asking the questions, they're going to want to talk about this more because now it becomes a trend. Sure. But you chose to continue to talk about it. Like, you could have definitely told them, hey, I know I talked about this last interview. I don't want to get into it too much or at all. Uh, No, but you continue to. And then you encourage Daniel Brooks and others to come out and speak on it as well, which is okay. And I'm not trying to say that what she, because I'm not backpedaling. Let's be very clear. I think that what she said was very important. And I think that she should stand on it. And at the end of the day, like, girl, I mean, you said it. And now you said it multiple times. You talked about it multiple times with different interviews. Of course, the next person that you're going to interview is going to talk about the situation, like because it has become it has become viral. At this point, people want to get you know clips and 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 little you know bits showed on social media so they can go back to their content. Like that's just how it works. You started the conversation, and then what happened was a lot of people started blaming Oprah, which probably put Oprah on the hot seat. And I'm not trying to sit there and say <laughs> Oprah probably got in her ear and was like, uh. Make this right, honey. You know, you know I helped you. You know I helped you, okay? Like, she should keep that same energy. If they ask about it, you got to talk about it because you started the conversation. And I said this on previous episodes. Her talking about this and having this conversation is going to derail the hype of the movie. And look what it did. Because let's be very clear. If you look at the optics, you see an actor, among other actors, talk about their troubling time during the production of this movie. And somebody said it on Twitter. With all this coming out and all this discourse, should we be watching the movie? And and let's be clear. Did y'all see how the movie is going? Like how much money it made? I believe it grossed over 58 million against a $100 million budget. Couldn't even break even. Okay. I know that might be controversial to say, but the movie is kind of flopping. And now the conversation is about pay and equity, and which is an important conversation. Should should you have maybe waited after the promotion? Because like the movie already had like a lack of promotion anyway. You know, the way that they and let's be very clear. Another one of my uh, content, my mutuals on TikTok said it best. Um, this wasn't marketed right. This wasn't promoted enough. Um, when you look at the, you know, film art, the film poster, it says the color purple. We're thinking we're just going to get a rendition of the old movie color purple. No, it was a musical. And, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, colors don't like musicals, child. You know, it. you know, you know, it. OK, especially if they if they don't know they're going into a musical. Right. You know, we have exceptions like Dreamgirls and, and, and Jordan and Sparkle or whatever. But like. You know, this was a musical musical, like, you know, Broadway almost, right? And people were taken back by that. So that happened. Then we had this interview, and now people saying, oh, should we be supporting the show? So people weren't showing up. I'm not saying it's all because of Taraji and her conversation, but it didn't help. And like I said, I think Oprah's definitely behind it. (laughs) I think Oprah definitely was in her ear like, let me tell you something. I get get it. I I, I completely, 100% understand. 
but but you gotta you gotta clear this up because now they coming for me. Now the movie is kind of lacking in numbers. Like a lot of a lot of the things are saying. I mean, even when you look at your cast, your cast is not really on your side. Because look at Fantasia. We talked about how she was like, oh, I'm a southern girl. I can drive myself. Like you know, she 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 took the pickle juice. You know, <laughs> okay. Uh, but ah, uh, girl. I mean, it's 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 it is a sticky situation. I love Taraji, and I and I do think that. This conversation should have been had, but maybe, maybe if she would have waited a little bit for the hype to go down for the movie, it could have, maybe the movie could have did more. Maybe it could have broke even or whatever. I don't know. Um, but you will tell me what you think in the comments because I know y'all will, too. Now, let's move on. So, yeah, I want to talk about Holly. Look at our little mermaid. Oh, um, all pregnant and all. Period. Well, she's been receiving a lot of backlash ever since posting her uh, pictures and videos of her pregnancy. As y'all know, last year she was pregnant and she tried to hide it. Um, her team probably encouraged, I believe that her team probably encouraged her to do so. She did two press runs for, you know, two different films, Little Mermaids and Color Purple. I feel like if she was pressured by her team and whatever studio or company to hide her pregnancy because we don't want to show a pregnant, unmarried woman, I think that, girl, it's 2024. It's like, why are we still? This ain't the 1950s, boo-boo. She had a child by somebody that she's not married with. Okay, that's fine. And I kind of think that it's so kind of weird that the general public also was like agreeing like oh my goodness like why would she be pregnant and she's not even married like like yeah, I, i'm pretty sure being married and having a child you know getting married before having a child right is definitely like a goal for a lot of people but it's just like if it happens it goddamn happens like why is it such a big like thing like i mean the father will be in the child's life. Yeah, obviously, I mean, he ain't no deadbeat. So y'all shouldn't be mad. Like, I, that's why I'm saying, like, you know, you know, I, I just, I, I, coming from me, you know, a person that talks about celebrities for a living, I just cannot ever be that invested, right? And also, if those companies did pressure her to do that, I think that they're very, 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 very toxic. You should watch what you have in your circle, Miss Holly. But if it was her choice, it was her choice not to show her pregnancy. She probably wanted to keep it to herself because, I mean, people were coming for her boyfriend. People were saying that this man is a bum and, and you know, kind of coming for her as well. And, you know, why do I have to tell you my life if y'all over here, the general public is going to sit there and say what they're going to say. I'm trying to have a successful uh, pregnancy, Okay. I don't have time to be worried about what's on social media. You, you know, she got so much scrutiny for playing the Little Mermaid. You know, some white folks is probably going to be like, see, she's living an unholy life. Like she's doing whatever, you know. So I'm pretty sure I, there was a reason why she didn't want to share her pregnancy. Right. Now, I've seen a lot of people, mutuals also, and just other content creators and just people on social media in general basically say that, you know, they're starting to drag her because, you know, now she wants to show video footage and pictures of her her pregnancy when she tried to keep it a secret from them. And I'm just like, I have to call this para, the parasocial relationship derangement syndrome. <laughs> Because, like, the fact that you must get an explanation and the fact that you think that you need, like, these celebrities to tell you every aspect of their lives. And I know it sounds weird coming from me. I'm a content creator that talks about celebrities. But, like, if they don't want to share nothing, that's just their choice. I mean, the audacity that that has. Like, I, girl, you know. <laughs> And mind you, her pregnancy was leaked several times. Like, we've seen her on DDG's stream. We've seen paparazzi take pictures of her. We've seen her in appearances, you know, basically hiding her body. You know, they talked about she had a pregnant nose. So y'all already knew that the girl was pregnant. Y'all just wanted her to give an, a, a formal announcement. Like, what was that going to do? Y'all was going to still say the same thing. I imagine if she would have if she would have still came out and said that she was pregnant, people would have still dragged her. It's nothing that she would have done, she would have came out on top. So the best thing to do... I ain't going to tell y'all nothing. I'm going to be off social media. Okay. Shout out to Holly on that. Okay. Shout out to her. That's why I, I, I love the Baileys. I don't care what nobody say. Y'all will. Y'all ain't going to ever make me dislike Chloe or Holly. I love them both equally. Okay. And I think that the way the media like treats them 
and the way that like the social media space kind of treats them is just kind of just weird. Like anyway, but y'all was loving y'all was loving the Shanti honey getting pregnant by a man that she been dating for about like ten years. Ain't put a ring on it now. If it was now in ten years, Holly, if we still not, you know. Girl, what's going on? When it comes to situations like this, like she's not bothering nobody. P Holly is the most unproblematic person that you can ever like think of. This is almost like the Beyonce conversation. It's just like when people just be coming for Beyonce for anything, and that girl don't say nothing. She literally says nothing. And, you know, she's the brunt of everybody's discretion or whatever. Like it just makes no sense. But hey, that's the that's what you gotta deal with. When you're a celebrity, so I guess you shouldn't be, you know, surprised. But anyway, girl, let's move on. We got some we got some mid topics to get into as well. I wanted to talk about this before I get up out of here, child. Cause I I, I I debated talking about it, but look, we gotta talk about it. So Nicki Minaj recently was getting dragged um this week. Yeah, you know, not not dragged too much, you know, because you know, not too much on the queen, right? Um, but she's using like AI to promote uh, Press Play, which was a really good song, by the way, with uh, her and Future. But, you know, she used a lot of AI to kind of, as a promo art for the song. Um, People are complaining about that because they think that it's kind of like lazy promotions, like you're not paying nobody to, you know, basically make these little images, like you're just putting it on the web to try to make like you know, you're getting somebody to put it on, on some type of AI site to, like, curate some type of ad to the song. Um, and people are saying, and people are just making all types of crazy takes talking about some, oh, yeah, this is like, she ain't got a budget. And and she's, like, basically using AI to really promote her album and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I mean, to a certain extent, I can understand how it may come off like lazy in promotions but i my question is though like what would have been the difference if a person made this picture for you know for an ad i mean or some type of graphic what would be the difference i mean it's still she's promoting a song she didn't use a bunch of people a bunch of designers for it granted but that's just where we are ai is the future I and mean, people a lot of people are using ai for a lot of things um, well, I, I, I do want her to do visuals though. Like, I think that that's very much something that should be a thing still. And I think a lot of artists are now not doing that no more, which is like, I get it. You want to just make it about the music, but like, you know, the, 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 the visuals is, is, you know, the, the icing on the cake and I get it. You know, a lot of these, a lot of these labels don't want to pay for that no more. Like they will definitely, they will definitely pay for like promotions. They will definitely pay for ads on TikTok and, and, you know, different social media apps rather than giving us like the visuals because the visuals are not as profitable as they were before. I mean, you're probably making a killing on YouTube, but like these are like two to three minute videos. So it's not like that much. You get what I'm saying? Now that I'm learning how um, you, the YouTube creator program actually works, um, you make more money. When you have longer videos, okay, <laughs> and people view it, right? So, do I? How do I feel about Nikki using AI? At first, I, I mean, at first, I thought it was a genius move because, like, when she came in and said, "Okay, I'm gonna promote, I'm gonna um come out with Pink Friday, or whatever, I'm gonna take out a Gag City," and the fans literally created like AI pictures of Gag City of them going to Gag City, just like even even um other companies were using posts and stuff like that like that was a marketing tool that you ain't really have to pay for like that is genius okay now call it what you want because some people was calling it lazy and some people were saying oh you know she's relying on her fans to promote her music and stuff like that but i'm like yeah like you know that's what that's a marketing tactic i mean some people sell controversy and and you know outrage marketing, you know that's our friend Lil Nas. Um, and then some people use their fans to promote it. I mean, if they look, if they want to do it, they want to do it. That's their choice. <laughs> look, um, but I definitely feel like Nikki should she should give us some visuals though. Let, let's be very clear. I, 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 we need the visuals. Okay, the music is great. The music is good. I want to see what it looked like. 
Okay. <laughs> That's just me. I don't care about her doing the AI stuff. I, I it, it is what it is. You know, like I said, this is the future. She's not going to be the only artist that's going to do this. I think a lot of artists are going to start doing that as well when they're dropping their albums. You know, hopefully, I don't want the whole music video to die. I think that they need to definitely do something with Billboard to make um, YouTube videos, like, I guess, be added on to the, you know, whatever it is to for the billboards because... I think that it's very important to have visuals. Like I understand that these, like a lot of these big name artists are not doing visuals no more, but like, girl, I just can't just live off music. I want to, I want to see the music video. Come on, girl. And I definitely want to see it for everybody. Like, girl, you look, Nikki, come on. (laughs) Anyway, y'all will tell me what y'all think in the comments about that. Now, recently, girl, just to get, just to get these last little bit of topics out the way. Why they suing Ice Spice for allegedly stealing in the hood? Child. And it, there's this other song that came out, child. It, I mean, it sounds similar. Eh, I don't know. I mean, it, it do sound like the beat sounds similar. I think I think y'all need to start just suing these producers. Why are we suing the artists? Like, I don't know, child, but mm, we'll move on. Um... One other topic that was like a big discussion was the fact that Usher had covered Vogue, but like he wasn't like the main person covering it. Like it, it wasn't his own solo cover. He took a picture with the with these kids and this white girl. I don't know who that is. I'm sure y'all tell me in the comments. Um, but like, yeah, why didn't he have his own? He's about to headline the Super Bowl. You know, it's Usher, Usher, and Usher is a declarated, you know, figure in in music, like in the music uh, industry, right? He should definitely have his own cover of Vogue, but I don't know. Maybe he, I, my whole thing is, maybe he didn't want to be the spotlight. Maybe he wanted to give other people the spotlight. I don't know, child. Uh, he did look happy to be there. I'm not sure. You know, Usher doesn't seem the type to like. I want the spotlight. Like, you know, he he seems like a person that moves to his own beat and, you know, he has his fans, he has people that, his supporters or whatever, and, you know, that's all that matters to him. He doesn't really care too much about anything, to be honest. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, I would have loved to see him do, like, a solo cover because this does look a little childish, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. I mean, we got some people making some comments, child. Well, this person says, so let me get this right. Uh, Vogue didn't think Usher was big enough to star his own solo cover. So they called a random white lady to accompany him, girl. <laughs> exactly. And he's literally in the background when he should be the main focal point. This is embarrassing. And the focus isn't on him. He's in a background like an extra. Ooh, child. <laughs> Not an extra, honey. I mean, look, 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 look. Like I said, Usher probably didn't want, didn't care to be the spotlight. Maybe he, you know, wanted to do something different. I don't know, child. But I'm definitely interested to see what he has to offer for the Super Bowl. I know he's going to play a lot of his greatest hits. You know, I can't wait. You know, my mom's going to be happy because my mom loves her some Usher. Okay, let's be very clear. So I know she's going to be happy. One other thing that girl kind of was a topic, right? We see Drake partying alongside an 11-year-old at some nightclub. Like, this rub people the wrong way. Let's be very clear. Because I'm like, you over here doing all this and your son is at home sleeping or at home studying for some type of exam or something like that. Like, is this not grooming? Is this not grooming? Let's be very clear. And I want y'all to keep that same energy when you see a child at a, uh, at a, you know, a drag bar for the kids or whatever, you know, like a, like a kids friendly drag show. Right. I want y'all to keep that same energy when y'all see that, when y'all see this, because this is, this is ridiculous. This is very much ridiculous. I think that, you know, I'm not saying a child should be at a child play. This is an 11 year old boy. Okay, he need to be at home, sleep, getting ready for a spelling test. How are you a rapper and you're not even learning your dang English? That's something you, That's something that's vital, okay? And I'm not saying that the boy probably can't rap. I mean, I'm sure, 
I think the gimmick is that he's a child rapper, so I'm pretty sure somebody's writing for him. But like, I think that's kind of I think that's, that's you know kind of problematic. And you know, kid, you know, Drake loves to hang around kids, child. Allegedly, allegedly, honey, I want to get sued, child. And you know, Drake be offing people. He be murking people, child. Let me let me not say too much, girl. But you know, I think this, that was weird. Mm. I don't know. Tell me what y'all think in the comments. Do I have anything else? Do I? Do I? Do I? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I did have this topic that I wanted to get into. So Marlon Wayans, and I, I'll actually play it too. Marlon Wayans basically makes a comment on how um, black men or black entertainers are kind of, you know, disrespected in the game for, you know, their entertainment wearing a dress or um, playing roles as women or whatever. And this is what exactly what he had to say. I'm black man putting on a dress conversation. You talking to a black man that put on a dress? Mm-hmm. I don't I, that That conversation to me is, it's silly because it's a, it's a, it's a negative thing that is only in black people. We have for some reason been programmed to look down on the craziest parts about our experience that we're supposed to not embrace our past, not embrace our history, not embrace our heroes, not embrace our different levels of comedy, that we have to be this way. When Robin Williams puts on a dress and is Mrs. Doubtfire, he gets nominated for an Oscar and white people think it's brilliant. His community embraces him. When Dustin Hoffman puts on a dress in Tootsie and he wins an Oscar, he's labeled brilliant. When black people put on dresses, all of a sudden we're labeled by our own people like something negative. And I'm like, we did White Chicks. That's a classic movie. Mm -hmm. It's a classic. I don't care what nobody says. It's a classic. Everyone says it's a classic. That whole thing about, you know, you put on a dress and you selling out, that, that is not an artist's mindset when you are an artist you know you go out and you create art you're the black man putting on it a- okay so let's get into it so i i'm kind of mixed i'm kind of on the fence because i do understand the plight of like black women when they don't like to be um portrayed by men um i think that a lot of the content creators really made it bad because they took it like a step further when it comes to like tropes of black women and stuff like that. I'm um, even when you t- want to talk about these comedians like a Eddie Murphy when it comes to you know uh, Respucia that or that, that Norbert movie, um, and even kind of like Martin with the whole Big Mama trope. I think also, you know, there's some points made on the other side, you know. Yeah, Robin, Robin, um, Roberts, Robin Williams could dress like Mrs. Doubtfire, right? And, you know, he's called brave. He's funny. He's entertaining. You know, he gets an Oscar nomination, right? Um, Marlon Wayans will play in White Chicks, and now, you know, it's demasculating that. And then we get that whole demasculating conversation. That's what I don't like. Because y'all only do it to black men. Like as if white men haven't been dressing as women for the longest. I mean, let's take it. Let's take it back to the Shakespearean days, okay? Where all men, you know, were just actors, and and there were no women actors, and the men would dress as the woman. Okay, let's be very clear. So, you know, they have been doing this. What men have been putting on a dress in in being funny for the longest. I think that if we are going to call them out, if we're going to call black men out for doing it, I think we got to call everybody out for doing that. Let's be very clear. Um, That's just my thing. You know, you know, everybody got their opinion. It's my opinion. (laughs) But 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 I do understand people's plight when it comes to, you know, you know, y'all are making fun of us like y'all are, you know, using tropes um, and, you know, profiting off of it. I definitely feel like I'm side eyeing you if that's your main way of delivering the comedy. Like when we're thinking about people like Marlon Wayans, like he's funny when he played white chicks and he was funny in other films. You get what I'm saying? 
Um, same with Martin, same with Eddie Murphy, right? They don't do it too much, but it's when you do it a lot, like when we're talking about the whole TT and, and you know, the people that's on social media that literally makes it a living putting on a wig and, you know, with these tropes, I think that is problematic. And I think that should, you know, be stopped. I'm not going to say the whole demasculating thing because let's be very clear. Ain't, look, these men are still out here straight as, as ever, Okay. Let's be very clear. So, it, you know, it's I don't think it's any type of, you know, demasculating or some type of ritual that, you know, black people have to do in order to become famous. Like, no, it's something that they want to do. It's something that they found funny that they want to, um, you know, put out or whatever. I don't know, yeah. But y'all will tell me what y'all think in the comments. And that is it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed you know, we really got into a lot of things this episode. So, you know, thank you so much for if y'all if y'all made it this far, honey, for my replay watchers. Yeah, I will be back next week and I hope to see you there. Okay.